What's up learners, it's Brian. I'm here in Brazil for masterclass with the Junior Saveira. I'm about ready to talk about my experience in Brazil as well as language and learning new languages. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and let's get started. Sure. I saw a difference when I was um, in California exercising uh -huh. about driving. Because uh -huh. when, when you are on the left side of the street, yes. the light is red. Uh -huh. when you, you want to turn left, uh -huh. you, you don't need to wait for the light to, like, to get green. Is that, is that right? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I mean. Sometimes. Uh, but I, I, my experience was, was that we were stopped and people started. To honk at you. Yes. Yeah. Because so you can be in the left hand turn to turn left. And if the light um, is green, but there's oncoming traffic, you have to wait till you can go. And you can go. As long as it's green and there's no red at all, then you can turn. Um, here you can't turn. Uh, can you turn on right? If there's a stop sign, you, can't, you can do that in the US. So if you are going to turn right, and uh, it's clear and you're able to and there's no sign sign saying that you cannot then you can turn right so yeah i think there's some of the laws on driving here are a little bit more strict any more uh, how did you see brazil before you leave here how did I see Brazil before living here i think my first experience with brazil was these people here um, because that was my first impression of Brazil. So, <laughs> for me, my, my, impression, my impression of Brazil is with them, and they're extremely kind and gracious. And when I uh, came here, I experienced the same thing, is that everyone, even here in Sao Paulo in a big city, like I noticed that people are, are friendly, I think. The other Americans... We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm, we're going to come to that. So uh, I think the other thing is the uh, in the parks, the Brazilian uh, tour groups. The, the, when, what, when you're 16, some 15. So when some Brazilian kids turn 15, their parents you know, send them to the U.S. to have this experience. Like a sweet 16. Yeah, like a sweet 16, but yeah. And when you get, when you get a bunch of kids in a group then they like to chant and make noise and be crazy their parents aren't around so i think this is an impression for people who are in florida especially uh who who witness them in like the theme parks and the shopping centers they're like oh man those crazy brazilians <laughs> but i have to say that i think at any country or nationality where you put together a group of 15 year olds and you send them out away from their parents they're going to be crazy so it's, I don't think it's a cultural thing. I think it's just the age. How is um, public school in the United States? Very different in Brazil? R right. So uh, public school is just going to depend on what area you live in, uh, whether it's really good or not so great. So if you are in a really great area where there's great public school, the, house, the price of the house that you buy or that you rent is going to be greater because people want to live in that area so they can have their kids go to that public school. So I think there's different levels of how great a public school is or not. It just depends on where you are. So you could have a really bad public school, but then there's really great <coughs> public schools. So I went to a public school from when I was uh, a young, young kid all the way through. I graduated from high school from public. So. I would say most people in the U.S., regular people, not, not, the, not the rich, the rich, rich, the 1% probably goes to private, but I would say uh, most people are go to a public school. And yes, high school in, that you see in the movies, it's exactly like it is bullying in real life. Thing. Che bullying, thing. bullying, cheerleaders, football players, it's ex people ask that. That's a question that gets asked. Is it the same as in the movies? Yeah, it's the same in the movies as in the movies. Uh, for example, here in Brazil, when you hire some someone, you can we cannot pay less. For example, nine hundred here than some 
And in the United States, do you have minimum, minimum wage? Minimum? Yeah, we have a one minimum and, wage. And now, another question: How do other people see you? For example, when you say, "Yeah, I'm from America, United States," how do other people, unlike them, treat you? They, I think you don't know if like you are treat? rich. Is so rich. Oh yeah, we talked about <laughs> this. Everyone in Brazil thinks uh, uh, Americans are rich. Yeah. That's not true. You are now. Well, I'm now. You're I'm you're rich, rich right now because I have dollars and I'm in Brazil, <laughs> so I can pay for everything. Everyone, we're going out afterwards. <laughs> to feed all these people, it's a hundred dollars. But yes, there is minimum wage, and it varies by state. So it matters which state you live in, and that's going to determine the minimum wage. So uh, I don't know what the minimum wage in Florida is right now. But it's, I think it's under $10 an hour. So it's not great. You get paid an hour. Uh, I'm salaried. Okay. But, but depending, like, the, like if you worked at McDonald's, you get hourly. It would be based on hourly. A lot of jobs are hourly. So. And here we, we have our salary monthly. 846. Oh, that's nothing. We get paid here monthly, and we say, oh, I. I make, I don't know, 2,000 guys a month. But right. You, you, you don't say that. You say, uh, you get paid like, oh, I make 13,000 a year. Right. We say you that a lot. If you're salaried, you say that. Oh, you can say that? Yeah. If you're salaried, you say that. You say by year. If you're hourly, you just say, oh, I make $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. Let's take one more and then let's move on because I don't, yes. One more question. That we have here and one more. Okay, then two more. Okay, two more. Hey, I know. That's okay. I okay. Try your hardest, and if, if you don't, if you can't, you can move into Portuguese, and I'll understand, or they can tell me. Okay. okay. And uma dica que você me daria, ou poderia me dar uma sugestão para todos, né? É, o listening in California is one. Listening in Miami is one. Like, listening in Dallas like accent. yeah. accents. Accents. Yes. E qual a dica que você daria, sei lá, para a gente... Porque assim, a minha dificuldade é essa, estou num lugar é, e, e o inglês é totalmente rápido, é diferente, e aí eu estou no outro que eu já entendo melhor, Detroit eu entendo melhor. So she's talking about the different, the, accent. the accents yeah. and which is like the, the best, the best one? So see, I can understand some. Um, I think, I think California, my accent's okay, right? Yes. I'm from California. Uh -huh. So Californians are very, mm, very level with their speaking. It's not too different. The South and the South, like Georgia, Alabama, mm. Texas, it's very, so it's going to be different. Uh, New York and New Jersey and Boston, very different. Uh, Chicago, the Midwest, they have a, a more, um, a, a better, not a better, I shouldn't say better, it's just a different accent. So it's an easier, f more uh, calm, calm. Okay. Uh, so coffee, and in the in the in the north and uh, like Boston or New York, coffee, coffee, coffee. That's and that's not what you. I don't think that that's the way, the best way for you to learn. But you're going to find that like the English that Junior teaches, a lot of the English they're not going to teach that extreme uh, northern accent. So you should look to stick the things like in California, Chicago, the Midwest, where the accent is not so strong. O or you could study British English, which then your English will sound completely different. But it's, it is a more proper English, but we, you know, y you have to choose. I think you have to choose one. Wouldn't you agree? You need to yeah, kind of choose... Uh, I went to Portugal last year, uh, so I got to experience uh, Portuguese from Portugal, and you can you can, you can tell the differences. So you just have to you have to decide you know kind of what you're going to focus on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, to, t to train your ear uh, to 
to understand all types of English. I think maybe in the beginning you want to focus on kind of one, and then once you have a better grasp on English, then you can go and I'm going to, like Jack, Jacqueline said, watch a YouTuber in the UK, in, in England, and then maybe watch a, a YouTuber from New York and kind of get that. That way you kind of get used to hearing that because when you go to New York or when you go to the South, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Yes, one more. So uh, I would like to know what you guys usually have for lunch because here in Brazil we usually have rice and beans, yes. uh, some steak. And what do you guys really, really eat for lunch? I think what we really eat for lunch is like, uh, s like salads or sandwiches. I think fast, fast food, even if. You can I can use the word fast food and you might think oh McDonald's or of course there's that but I think things that are quick so a sandwich salad that type of thing for lunch and lunch for us is not the big meal um, dinner is the big meal so yeah that's that's that is a difference there we generally eat between twelve and one for lunch for for lunch. Let's say it again. What about us? Oh, what if, I don't know. What about you? Same time. Sometimes at three. Dinner. Four. The time for dinner changes uh, depending on where you live. If you're in a big city like here in Sao Paulo, like like in New York, you're going to eat later, I think, in the evening. Uh, but if you're somewhere that is not such a, a city, you're probably going to eat it maybe between like five and six. It just depends. I think it, it, it varies uh, in the United States what time people eat. It also is a personal preference, I think. But like when you're in a big city, like here in Sao Paulo, like I said, in New York or Chicago or San Francisco, you're probably going to eat later in the evening. We got one more question. Okay. Hi, yes, hi. And so I follow you. You follow me. My podcast? Yeah. yeah, okay. Especially about the cultural difference. Between sure. That. Mm -hmm. And I just say I like it. Thank so you. Much. And it's improved my listening. Perfect. Just thank you. That makes me happy. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in the next few slides. We'll talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about hobbies and that, and and we'll talk about the podcast. Yeah. I like to ask you, when you are you are sitting your home, yeah. is there a thing or a food that you miss a lot in Brazil? Yes, I'm going to get to that. That's coming. It's coming. Is it the next slide? So that's perfect. So we're going to transition to the next slide. So my favorite foods in Brazil. So coxinha is coxinha is probably the most Brazilian on this list, okay? Uh, but I love good coxinha, not bad coxinha. Good coxinha. <laughs> this is something that the rest of uh, besides Florida, because Florida it's like little Brazil basically. I can get coxinha in Florida no problem. Um, but the rest of the United States doesn't know what coxinha is. And uh, it's great. So I love pizza from Sampa. I love Sampa pizza. Uh, I think that there's places I can get this pizza in. I can get pizza, Brazilian pizza, uh, or pizza from Sao Paulo. I can get it in Orlando, but I haven't really, I haven't done that. <coughs> but I had pizza the other night and it, here, and it was amazing. I love it. And then Japa. <laughs> Because, because we can, of course, I can get Japanese uh, in Orlando, uh, but not Hodigio, and uh, not the same quality. I think that the quality of Japanese food here in Sao Paulo is amazing. So, uh, and we've kind of, well, I've talked about it before, I've heard this from other people as well, that some people say that the Japanese food here uh, in Sao Paulo is better than in Japan. So. Yes, you've been. Not that much. Okay. But uh, I love Japanese food here in Brazil.
So those are my those are my three favorites. So what Americans think of Brazil? Somebody brought this up. How am I on time? We're good on time. Okay. I have a list again. So what Americans think of Brazil? My first one is samba. Everyone knows how to dance samba. Everyone here knows how to dance samba, right? No, exactly. <laughs> You're Brazilian. Uh, that everyone knows how to play soccer really well. Everyone knows how to play football really well. No, and you don't. You don't really care for football. I don't. I'm some Paulino, but I'm not like. Um, I just watch when my team is doing yeah. well, but... But not like crazy not every day. No, no, no. I don't fight on streets, you know, I don't... <laughs> because of the team. So everyone thinks uh, there's a lot of violence, and I think that I get that look like somebody knows that I'm going to Brazil, or they, know, they don't know that I've lived here before. They're going to be like, well, isn't it violent? No. I, I say... Uh, I walk with the same um, being observant and making sure of my surroundings. I walk the same here in Sao Paulo as I walk in New York City when I'm in New York City. Because yeah, it, anything can happen anywhere. So that there's monkeys all around. <laughs> like this monkey right here. You were just yeah. up, in, up in the ceiling. <laughs> I say monkeys, and he's like climbing down from the wall. Uh, but there's, uh, I think that people think there's monkeys all around, but yeah, no. Oh, well, everyone thinks that the, all Brazilian uh, girls are models, right? And we are, and you are. Uh, people sometimes think Brazilians speak Spanish, which is funny. Yeah. What? I've heard people say, oh, do you speak Brazilian? Brazilian, yes. <laughs> no, Portuguese. But for Portuguese, no, no, we speak Portuguese. No, but Portuguese, Portuguese people speak Portuguese. No, Brazilian is speaking por Portuguese, too. Oh, ethnicity. I was trying to read what this word was. So I think that, uh, like in this room, if I look around, I see so many different skin colors. And I don't think that people understand that Brazil is very similar to the United States where uh, there's this rich mix of people and uh, skin colors and diversity. And I don't think that people realize that. Uh, that's not something that comes up a lot, uh, but I think that people think that Brazil is, you know, just filled with people that look Latin. But I think, like, looking across this room, I see white, I see black, I see everything in between, uh, Middle Eastern, etc. I see all of that in the room. So it's very, to me, it's very similar to what the United States is in terms of we're extremely diverse. Of course, there's parts of the United States where it's not diverse and it's ma majority white or majority black or <laughs> depending on the neighborhood. But I don't think people really understand um, how similar we are um, in terms of diversity. Ah, okay, so uh, this is the podcast. What was your name in the back? What? Carla. Carla? So Carla mentioned the podcast. So this is kind of some of my hobby. I started this with my friend uh, Stephanie. We have a podcast all about Orlando and things to do uh, in Orlando. So this is one of my hobbies uh, that's been fun. So does everyone know what podcasts are? Anyone who doesn't know what a podcast is? Junior, you have a podcast now. Yeah, yeah we do. Podcast é tipo um aplicativozinho, você acha que baixa como, como começa a ouvir, como se fosse programinhas de rádio. Né? Então. É, explica aí. <risos> so, spot, you're on Spotify. Você pode baixar Alvisa, algum aplicativo que você pode ouvir música. E aí você entra no, como se fosse um programa de rádio do Júlio, um programa de rádio do Brian. O Brian é esse Orlando Out of Contact. So if you want to listen uh, to the podcast, 
you can uh, take a picture of this or write this down. It's Orlando out of context. Uh, and if you search Spotify, if you search iTunes, I think it's on Google Play. Google Play, you have it. So it's. Came uma vez, né? O os meus stories, né? Quem segue lá já viu, já a cara, por exemplo, já segue. Mas sigam lá, tentar no Instagram, no YouTube, Facebook. Yeah, we're on Facebook too. Yeah. Facebook, todas as coisas aí. Podcast, tudo. Melhora bastante o listening. Oh, the website. Oh, so okay. if you go to Orlando, out, I made the slides, but I don't know what's coming. Uh, if you go to orlandooutofcontext.com, you can find all the ways that you can listen. Okay, But it's good to practice. Uh, and if you're going to Orlando and you don't want to do just Disney or just shopping and you want to learn more about Orlando, uh, that's what we talk about. And sometimes we have people we interview, sometimes not. So another hobby is traveling. So you can follow my uh, traveling adventures. That's my Instagram handle there. But last year I went to Europe for the first time. So I got to go to Portugal. My friend here, who uh, she's a, a gringa too, we met in Portuguese class uh, here in Sao Paulo and we became very good friends. And she invited me to her wedding. Uh, she was li living with her fiance in Portugal at the time and they got married just outside of uh, Lisboa. And so I went last year to Portugal And that was kind of a cool experience because having lived here in Brazil, I got to understand more of the Brazilian culture by going to Portugal and seeing Lisbon. So if you, if you ever have the opportunity to go to Lisbon, uh, I highly recommend it. I just went for a wedding, but I was extremely impressed. Anyone been to Lisbon? No. No Brazilians. You should go. It's yeah. good. The, it's not too expensive. Uh, the food is very good. It's just a, it's a great place. And it's relaxed. Mm -hmm. so. You can hear Portuguese there, right? Yeah. Did you understand? Like, yeah. The, I was surprised because I thought that I, it would be so different that I wouldn't understand, but I was able to understand some things. Right. So anyway, feel free to follow me. Traveling is a big ho hobby. Uh, after uh, Lisbon, I went to Paris. Uh, for the first time, and I loved Paris as well. So you'll see pictures from my travels uh, on my Instagram account. What's next? So you s okay. Any other questions? How's it? Yes. Which is the most common social media user? Here, Brazil, most Facebook. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Instagram. The same. Yeah, it's the same. It's not like the days of Orkut when MySpace was really popular and then Orkut was popular here in Brazil. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think it's pretty uh, universal and it's really Instagram. I mean, Facebook is still there. I think Facebook is for the older generation and Instagram, you know, now everyone's, my mom's on Instagram. So. Everyone's on Instagram. So. About uh, celebrity. Have you ever met a celebrity you work at Disney? Yeah, at Disney. <laughs> Let's see. I've. Who have I met? I don't think I've met anyone that great or that you would really know. I've been close to. I've been close to Backstreet Boys, uh, working in the hotels, uh, was close to them. I checked in, does anyone know Al Roker? He's, a, he's a, um, like a news person, his, he's very famous in the US. Uh, I checked in his wife and his kids one time to the hotel, but I don't have any good stories. I don't even remember that. Did I meet him? Oh, okay, I met him. But no, so, like I don't really have uh, any um, any celebrity stories. From uh, Hollywood? No. <laughs> Did you say Salon? <laughs> no. Well, I'm from California, but uh, I've been to Hollywood. But I haven't, I haven't had that. But where I live is so far north of Hollywood that, no, this, I'm boring, sorry. 
no, no big celebrity. If, if one comes to me, I'll tell you, but I, I don't really remember. You said that you like pizza, mm. Junior, show you uh, Oh, I love Pau de Queijo. <laughs> I like Pau de Queijo. I like uh, Alini's mother's uh, feijoada is really good. Brigadeiro. Brigadeiro. Yes, of course, Brigadeiro. I've made it myself. Uh, caipirinha, too. Everything. Yes, I love pastel. I love everything. Look at me. Was there one more? Yes. You said uh, when you start studying Portuguese, mm. uh, you learn uh, the correct The Portuguese, proper, yeah. But when you're but in the street, the Portuguese yeah. is not so good. Not so good, good. yeah. But uh, people here, I think, have, have uh, patience with someone make mistakes. Uh, when I agree, they yes. make, mix, make mistakes. Yes. Uh, in the USA, is the same? Or? I think so. I think it depends on where you are. I think in Florida where there's a large population of Latin, I think that it's, it's fine, it's easy. Um, I think that if you went to a state like um, in the middle of the country, like I lived in Oklahoma for three years, they're going to be maybe a little bit less patient with you. But, but if you went to New York or if you went to San Francisco or a big city, you're not going to have this, this problem as much not that it's a problem, but you're going to have a more of a challenge in those states that are predominantly white. Yeah. yeah. Ah, right there. Sorry. Uh, I want to know if you uh, have you ever watched Keys? <laughs> have you ever watched Chavez? Chavez? Uh, <laughs> no, I've never watched a full episode of Chavez. But I know Junior is a big fan. Which team do I support? Orlando City. Well, for U.S., I don't really support. I, I support the Brazilian national team if they're going to go somewhere. But I don't really follow Brazilian football, but I do have the alert to pop up on my phone for Orlando City. I think Orlando City soccer uh, is doing a lot for, um, for Orlando. It's nice to have a, a major league soccer team in Orlando, and it's nice to see uh, this grow. Uh, and so I like watching it. We have a, like a brand, they built a brand new stadium just for Orlando City. So it's great to see that the city is growing. Uh, and so, yeah, if, I haven't even been to the new, have you been to the new stadium? I have not. Last year. And the owner of Orlando City is a Brazilian. It's a Brazilian. Fabio Augusto. I think he's doing, he's doing good things for not only Orlando, but the Brazilian community in Orlando. Another question? I thought I saw them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there any other language that you guys have to learn at school? For example, in Brazil, we have to learn English or Spanish. In USA, at school, do you guys uh, learn other languages? Generally, the choices, we have choices in there Spanish, uh, French, sometimes German, and that's just a choice that you make. You do... In general, in public school, you do have to take a foreign language, um, and those would be the three most popular. And sometimes, uh, like my high school, they had a Japanese, uh, which I think they, maybe they had a teacher that just happened to know and so was able to teach it so they could offer it. Uh, but in general, the number one is Spanish, and then number two is French, and three would be German, and that's another thing where it just depends on the faculty or the, the staff at the school if, if there's a teacher that knows how to teach it, I think. Uh, but generally, it's Spanish or French, and it's a choice on which one, uh, but generally, it's not a, you, have to have, you have to take at least, I think, maybe two years of it. Obrigado pelo obrigado. Imagina você falar para um americano que não conhece, 
Pô, cara, quebra o meu galho, o que, que ele vai fazer? Eu não entendi. Você tem uma expressão, quebra meu galho? Não. Como? Break my front. Break my front. O que você entende por break my front? O que você entende por isso? Break my brunch. Here, hey, Brian, come on, break my brunch. Like brunch is in like breakfast? Branch, branch, branch. Break my branch, sorry. Break my branch. I don't know. <laughs> I need help, Brian. I need help. Please help me. Break, break my branch, please. I don't know. No? <laughs> That's really strange. It's like, help me out. It's like, give me a hand. Give me a hand. I really need, need your help. <laughs> Yeah, Do you know where it comes from? Like, what the story behind that phrase is? I have no idea. Okay, stop doing this story. Google knows. Google? Google knows. Somebody Google and then tell us. What about... Oh, mamão com açúcar, né? Papaya with sugar. And so how would you say that? Oh, it's so easy. Oh my God, it's papaya with sugar. <laughs> yeah, like piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah. Because it's uh, easy to eat. Like, you know, piece of cake. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. In the break of the branch, it was because in the past people would go on paths with the branches and the trees. Uh, so make it easier on me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yo, I'm here for the money. For you, come along and see it's true.